it's a great time to buy things that are break even or creating a little bit of cash flow because there's less competition. You're able to negotiate better deals today. And then the outlook is, you know, in the next, nobody has a crystal ball, but in the next call it five year period, we're going to see rates come down at least from this eight and a half percent I just talked about. And so if you take something that eight and a half percent refinance it into six and a half percent, that is a significant shift in your cash flow. Welcome back to the Money Seed Podcast. My guest today is Ali Nichols. Ali is the CEO and co-founder of Getaway. And Getaway is a new platform for real estate investors. Ali, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Gabe. Excited to be here. Ali, tell us in a nutshell, what is Getaway? Yeah, so Getaway, we are a, uh, a platform for real estate investors to really grow and scale their portfolio. So we help individual uh, real estate investors really go from owning, you know, call it one to five properties and helping them get to 20, 25 plus. Um, and we do that through a co-investment model. Um, so we'll actually help our, our customers, our investors uh, bring more capital to the table when they're growing their portfolio. So it, with that, they're able to scale and potentially you know, buy three to four properties this year versus the one that they were originally planning on buying. Got it. Okay. So hypothetically speaking, right? Let's say I want to buy an investment property and I want to buy it, rent it out. So usually I'm going to need to gather 25, 30, maybe 35% of a down payment. So hypothetically speaking, I want to buy a hundred thousand dollar property. I need to come up with 30, $35,000 in cash plus some closing fees yep. and this and that. How are you helping make that easier? So we'll actually come into the equity portion of the deal, that 35,000 down you were talking about. Um, we could come in and bring, you know, upwards to 15, 20% of the deal, depending on, on the actual property and, and its cash flows and so forth. Interesting. So my down payment would be less. Yes. Got it. So walk me through the model on your end. So, I mean, it's clear to me how I'm going to make money. I, I can get into a property for less, right? And still yeah. enjoy the cash flow and the appreciation and all that. What's the yeah. business model look like on your end? Yeah. So for us, uh, the biggest thing is one, helping, you know, we've built a ton of, of product and technology around helping find the best deals for our customers. So first and foremost, we can help you source and identify an opportunity that fits your buy box and, and really what you're going for. Um, and then from there, we help you through the transaction. So there's an opportunity for us, um, you know, to monetize and collect uh, revenue on the actual brokerage side of the house. So that's not coming out of our investors' wallet, but really uh, from the seller's side. Um, and then for that that capital that we invest into the deal, the way that we've structured it is is that you, as the investor, get to keep all of the upside and appreciation. Um, so in exchange, we just have a set interest only rate on the capital that's in, or the principal that we bring into the deal. So kind of at its simplest terms, we're offering um, like a five year interest only product with a balloon repayment of the principal at the end of the term. Um, and the idea is that, you know, we're investing in properties we believe will have appreciation. Um, and thus you would be able to do as an investor, like a re a cash out refinancing event to pay out that principle that we brought to the table. Got it. So you help me get the money to, to acquire the property. And then five years later, I do a cash out refi and I pay you back. Yep. That's and the goal. In, and you keep, are able to keep recycling and keep growing. <laughs> that's really cool. Okay. And so you make money on the interest of the money you give me. Plus, I imagine, like you said, on, on the brokerage purchase side. And I imagine you also get into the property management side, right? Like if this is a short-term rental, then you would also get into the property management side of it, correct? So we're actually, we've shifted our focus um, and are really just focused right now on long-term rentals. And we've really found the best success into in the small multifamily space. So like our core focus is, I would say, properties with two to 10 doors um, and in really like high cash flowing opportunities, just given where the market is today. 
Um, so on the property management side, what we found is best is actually partnering with local experts on the ground. Like who is the best group in in the markets we're going after? Like for example, Columbus, Ohio is a big market for us right now. Uh, we're, we're teaming up with the best team on the ground to help run the maintenance and leasing uh, part of the puzzle, um, which allows us to scale a lot faster because we're not worried about hiring folks on the ground that can cover uh, all of these different locations and distributed investments. Got it. So if, I mean, one of the things that attracted a lot of people to Airbnb and short-term rentals is because of the potential for higher cash flow than yeah. say just long-term rent. Now, if I'm acquiring a property and I'm essentially financing 90 or 95% of it, right? Yeah. Um, is it still possible to cash flow these, these properties? Yep. So that's one thing with our product and, and where we've invested so much of our te like technology, like I mentioned before in product, um, is around underwriting and making sure that we're only doing investments that we believe can cover the expenses, including, you know, the payment to get away. Um, so every time that we look at an opportunity, it not only has to uh, cover your mortgage, uh, your know, taxes, insurance, the property manager we just talked about, but also cover the getaway payment, um, a maintenance reserve, expected vacancy reserves, things like that. Um, and if a deal hits like our debt service coverage ratio with all fully loaded expenses, then we'll do a, an opportunity. So not all properties qualify. We're actually very specifically looking for super high yielding uh, long-term rental properties. And that's why we've just naturally been drawn to multi-door unit deals. Tell me a little bit about the legal side of it. How are these structured? Like do you open a separate yeah. LLC for each property? Exactly. So how we structure it is we, uh, we form an LLC with our investor joint LLC where the investor is the majority owner. They're the manager of the LLC. We come in as minority owner, but preferred stake. Uh, and with that, our whole relationship is dictated. Um, uh, in the operating agreement of that entity. That entity then goes out and actually purchases the property. So they hold the entity holds title or the LLC holds title. Uh, it takes out uh, the, the mortgage on the property as well. And then once uh, the investor either refinances us out of the deal, buys us out of the deal, um, they take over 100% ownership. We exit any claims to anything. Um, and then they keep the property ongoing, which is awesome because you're not dealing with title transfers and you know changes of ownership down the road. It's just a seamless process from there. Nice. Uh, and so I imagine that's all outlined in the operating agreement, right? You have the LLC, yep. you got an operating agreement and it outlines, yep. okay, after five years, six years, you do a cash out refi, Here's what you relinquish happens, yeah. all claims to the property. Nice. Okay. So you don't do any liens. You don't do anything else to the property. It's just the LLC. Yep. So we don't, we truly have an equity stake in, in the deal. We don't hold a, a lien uh, or anything like that. It's actually, it's actually very clean. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So what, what markets are you in right now? Yeah, so we're very much focused on the Midwest and the Southeast. Uh, surprise, surprise, like that's where you can still find cash flow uh, in Q4 of 23. Uh, so, so we're really drawn to markets, I would call them like true investor markets, where uh, you still see rent growth and strong signal on rents, but the purchase price and acquisition price, that I should say rent to purchase ratio, is still pretty high. And right now, what kind of mortgage rates are you seeing? I mean, because <laughs> I, I imagine if it's an LLC, you might be pushed yeah. towards a commercial loan with different terms, shorter payback period. How are the how are the loans usually structured, and what are the interest rates? Yeah, so we're fortunate that we're able to lead into the DSCR product, which exists on the market today. I don't know if you're familiar, if the viewers are familiar, but uh, it's a very it mirrors a conventional loan in its terms. Like you could have a 30 year fixed, uh, you know, amortizing loan. Uh, but instead of qualifying the borrower, it qualifies the actual asset. So it looks at it to your point, like a commercial business. So it's, you know, the, the lender will look, okay, how much 
cash flow will this property produce? Like, what is the what are the rents on this deal compared to the purchase price? And if we believe that they're significant, uh, you know, you'll be able to get better terms because it's a less risky investment. Um, so with that, that's a product that we've been able to use a lot of a lot of the same characteristics that you'd get with your conventional loan. But to your point, it is a little bit more expensive uh, because it it falls in the non qualified bucket compared to conventional financing that's you know backed by the government, all that fun stuff. Um, so rates right now, it really varies because it is based on the property and the property's performance. And then also, um, our investors credit score is the other major input. Um, but we're seeing stuff today, November of 23 in the like eight, eight to eight, seven range for, for a 30 year fixed. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting. And- the interest only product is the same too. Like we're not seeing a huge delta in an interest only product that again is 30 years, but a 10 year arm. Got it. As an example, can you walk us through like a recent deal that you guys closed and maybe run us through the numbers? <laughs> oh gosh. I like need to pull something up. <laughs> um, yes. So a few deals that we have, you know, closing right now, or one that just closed yesterday, actually, uh, was a duplex in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, the purchase price was around $140,000. Uh, and I'd have to pull up the exact rent, but I know the rents were just, you know, all together for both sides, uh, around like $2,100 a month. So significantly, as you think about, you know, in real estate, you hear a lot about the 1% rule. Uh, these are these are exceeding the 1% rule right now, just because financing costs are so expensive that you really, we're really looking for opportunities with significant potential. Um, but with that deal, the our investor client, I believe, brought around 6% um, to the down payment. And then we covered... We covered the rest uh, in terms of down payment amount, um, and then we were able to secure a uh, a first position mortgage for seventy five percent of the value of the property. Nice, that's amazing that you can get you know over two grand a month in rent on a property that costs one hundred thirty thousand. I mean, those numbers, like you said, it's not just better than the one percent rule; it's like way better than the one percent rule. So. That's, so even an with an eight percent interest rate, um, you can still you can probably still make that cash flow. Yeah, and it's a really interesting time because it's buyer's market right now in a lot of these places. Like if you were to be doing this a year ago, everybody's coming in, you know, cash. It's super competitive. But right now, I think the interest rate environment has scared a lot of people out of play. And what we found is you're actually able to negotiate some pretty great deals in terms of purchase price. And so our, you know, our customer segment, and I'd say this to a lot of of your listeners is like, if a deal, if you're interested in getting into real estate and you obviously have enough resources to feel comfortable and if you're to cover a few months of who knows what, um, it's a great time to buy things that are break even or creating a little bit of cash flow because there's less competition. You're able to negotiate better deals today. And then the outlook is, you know, in the next, nobody has a crystal ball, but in the next call it five year period, we're going to see rates come down at least from this eight and a half percent I just talked about. And so if you take something that eight and a half percent refinance it into six and a half percent, that is a significant shift in your cash flow. that it's like it's an opportunity for your future, um, especially if you have a long term outlook on your real estate portfolio. Absolutely. Yeah. And I agree with you completely. If you can make it kind of just cash flow or just break even, once if you have a long term outlook three years, five years down the road, if interest rates come back down, you refi, all of a sudden, you know, rents have gone up in three, you know, three to five years, the property value has gone up, and now your mortgage is less. So all of a sudden that can cash flow really well. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit more about deal flow. Where do you find the deals 
And how many deals are you reviewing you know, per day, per week? <laughs> how busy are you? A lot. Uh, no, so we, we have built technology that actually like ingests many different sources. I think we have 10 different sources, even beyond just like the MLS um, in terms of incoming data of available opportunities. Um, so we, we ingest all publicly available data plus uh, some, I don't, proprietary, like off market deal flow that we just get from being, you know, building relationships and things like that. Uh, and then we've actually built a, you know, uh, a system that is able to automatically underwrite these opportunities uh, and essentially stack rank the best deals. Uh, for our for I call it the human in the loop for our team to then go spend time on because there's so many opportunities out there it can be overwhelming so we needed a way to figure out okay if we have a limited you know limited number of resourcing uh, how can we actually make sure we're looking at the best opportunities every single day and getting in front of those um, but gosh we're probably with our tool I mean. Everything that new that comes on the market plus off market supply, we're getting through it daily. So, I, at least in the states, like we're pre pretty much cover ten states right now in terms of our analysis. So, I, we're hopefully seeing it all because that's been the system that we've built. <laughs> and from a company history point of view, I believe you're a startup. You are venture yeah. capital backed. Maybe tell us a little bit more, like how long have you been around and tell us a little bit about the journey because in previous um, iterations, you mentioned that you were in, in, in short-term uh, rentals yeah. and now you, it sounds like you've done a pivot. Tell us a little bit about the yep. journey. Yeah. So we were fortunate. We raised venture capital funds um, in the middle of 2022. So just uh, a year and a half ago. And you know, my, my co-founder and I, we became obsessed with this idea of helping more people become real estate investors. We were previously at a different real estate company where we were uh, scaling quite a large uh, single family rental portfolio. Uh, but our biggest client was a big institution. Uh, we kind of looked at each other and we're like, okay, this is awesome. Like we love what we're doing, but we're kind of as individuals, we're getting left out of the game. So how can we build a company that really helps, you know, at first it was like helps our friends start investing in real estate. And that's obviously like grown beyond just our friends. Uh, and so at first, you know, we really thought about it as how do we reach the most people uh, at, as, as we can. Um, it really came down to thinking about getting the check sizes to be the smallest they possibly could. So we were really approaching it like, what if we did this fractional route where you could buy a share of a property? Uh, and really what we came to find out is as we talked to customers is that wasn't solving the problem that our customers were facing. Like everybody I talked to was like, this is really cool. I love the concept. But when I think about owning real estate, I want to own a portfolio by the time I retire that I can either leave my W-2 job I, uh, and live on the passive income. I can just know that that's my retirement fund. I can pass it down to my kids as a legacy and set them up for, for their life. Um, and it was the same theme over and over and over and over again. And I was like, oh my gosh, like that that's the nugget. Like, how, okay, so what's holding you back? Like what's holding you back from doing that sooner? Um, and it really came down to, you know, this ability to scale faster. And, and one, the big piece was obviously financing. That's uh, capital will always be a limiting factor, but it was really interesting to hear that you, once you graduate from, the conventional financing space, meaning like your debt to income, you know, after one or two properties, your debt to income's out of whack. And so now you're looking to go into more of the commercial financing, but there's nobody to service you until your portfolio is really around like 10 million plus. And so there's this missing middle. And I was like, okay, so it's 
it's nearly impossible for people to make that jump without support or handholding or them just committing to it full time. Um, and I saw that huge opportunity for us to come in and slot right in there and really help folks go from owning one to two properties to getting to their goal of, you know, a whole portfolio uh, that is their future retirement, future job and such. Um, so that's, we really got pulled in this direction, you know, so we realized, okay, we're pivoting because this is where the customers are telling us like they want to be and, and how can we help solve that for them? And you hit on an interesting topic there about the financing. So you're absolutely right. If you start buying rental properties in your own name, then everyone you have to qualify for on its own merits. And then all of a sudden, like you said, now how much debt you owe on all your other properties comes into it, et cetera. This is going through an LLC. I imagine you have good relationships with the with the lenders, et cetera. What kind of uh, scrutiny should I expect to undergo if I were to invest through you? Yep. So the biggest pieces um, from a qualification point of view are really um, credit score. Never get around that one. We we'll, <laughs> just it's it's what's used across the board. So FICO. Um, experience. So, you know, the more properties you own, the more comfortable the lenders can get with like, okay, you know what you're doing, you're going to get better rates there. Um, and then the third is uh, basically reserves and like proof of proof of reserves and uh, showing that like, in a situation where, you know, for a couple months, a unit's not leased, or let's say a water heater goes out or something of this, of such nature there, you have enough liquidity that that you'll be okay. And that the property can continue to run if you have to cover the costs. Got it. That makes sense. So tell us where can we learn more and tell us about the website and can we actually yeah. see some of these deals? Um, yeah. <laughs> I love it. So you can learn more at getaway.co, just .co. Um, and when you sign, head to the website, create an account, and you'll be able to check out some of our featured deals where they're pre-vetted um, and ready to go for investors to, to seize. Um, and then if you want to connect with me directly, um, you can find me on LinkedIn. It's just Ellie Nichols. Fantastic. Ellie, I'll put those into the show notes. Thank you awesome. very much for joining us today. I love what you guys are doing. I love the fact that you are making real estate investments easier and more accessible to people. I love the fact that you are addressing that missing middle that you mentioned. Um, keep up the good work. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Hey, thanks for joining us for another episode of the Money Seed Podcast. Please remember to click like and subscribe. It really helps spread the message to other investors and it helps attract new viewers to the show. We appreciate your support. Thanks very much.